Kate, how well traveled are you in Lagos? Well, I've lived on the island and on the mainland, and I still do business on both. I also have family and friends who live across the city, so I'll say fairly well. It's my turn. Wait. <laughs> well, you said fairly well. So, which means, like most Lagosians, you occasionally find yourself in Ogba today, okay. Ikoyi tomorrow, yeah. and possibly sometimes, you know, traversing Victoria Island and the mainland on the same day. That's a Lagos experience. But then, that simply means our roads cannot but be in a sound condition. Yeah, the good news is they actually are, especially under the administration of the immediate past governor, Babatunde Raji Fashola, Lagos roads have experienced such an upgrade that mm. mobility across the city is much safer and mm. very convenient. Mm. Yeah. So join us as we review these achievements on today's episode of Lamata Half Hour. I am Kate Harmony. And I am Abafemi Craig. First, we take the news highlights. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the news highlight on Lamata Afar. Following the handover of the administration of Lagos State to Mr. Kiyomi Ambodi as the new governor of Lagos State, a cross-section of Lagosians have set agenda for the new government in different sectors of the economy, including transportation. Some of the people who spoke with our crew shared their optimism in the newly inaugurated government and its ability to build on the huge successes of the Babatunde Raji Fashola's administration in the area of transportation. Government is a continuity from where uh, Ashiwajibola made stops, Babatunde Raji Fashola picks from there, and I, I, I want him, as in Aki Umiambodi, to start from there and even expand more beyond what we expect. Because Lagos State, you know, Lagos State is a, uh, is a commercial area where everybody focuses attention on. I believe he can do it. He's, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a well-known man, he's a, he's a very intelligent man who can drive this uh, state to the higher level. I expect Ambode to upgrade the stage of transportation in the area for uh, common man, because common man is the one that's suffering for the whole issue. I believe he's in the office right now. He's can, he can hear what I'm saying. Please upgrade the stage so that... A common man can also enjoy the benefit of transportation. Thank you. The Lagos State Government is currently implementing a strategic transport master plan that is geared towards delivering a multimodal integrated public transport system for the state by the year 2030. Some of the projects already implemented under the plan include the mile 12 to CMS bus rapid transit system, the extension of the BRT from mile 12 to Ikurudu, and the ongoing construction of the Blue Line Rail project from Okokumaiko to Marina, among other road projects across the state. The Lagos State Government has finally secured the right of way for the construction of the Red Rail Line from Agbado to Marina. The agreement and memorandum of understanding was signed between Lagos State and the relevant federal government ministries and agencies two weeks ago. The rail line, which will run within the Nigeria Railway Corporation NRC right-of-way, will significantly impact on the growth and development of the Lagos and Ogun State's industrial and economic zone. The scheme, which has already attracted $2.4 billion investment from the private sector, is expected to ferry 1.8 million passengers daily from Agbado in Ogun State to Ido in Lagos State. And that ends the news highlight. Basically, what Lamata does is uh, to coordinate uh, public transportation in Lagos State. And um, we came up with a transport master plan. Developed together with the World Bank, the objective of this plan is finding long-lasting solutions for the problem of transportation in Lagos. Currently under its first steps of development, the plan has already proven itself a big success, dramatically increasing the connectivity in a city in continuous expansion and enjoying an unparalleled demographic and economic growth. Our responsibility is to ensure that we provide the necessary infrastructure to meet the growth, to improve the quality of life, to improve the standard of living, and to make uh, Lagos a vibrant and livable city in years to come.
Lamata. Keeping Lagos moving. You know, recently we looked at transportation milestones reached by former governor Babatunde Raji Fashola in the eight years of his administration as governor of Lagos. And his achievements in the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Scheme and the Bus Rapid Transit BRT has certainly placed him highly in many's hearts. Indeed, but BRF's achievement in Lagos State through Lamata will be far from complete if we don't mention the roads. Some were expanded, mm. some rehabilitated, and some were built where no road was before. Many had their drainages cleared and fixed. Some had street lights erected on them and several other pedestrian bridges. So let's take you on a tour of these roads. Upgraded for safer travel, beautified to please the eyes, bettered for the use of all road users, whether cyclists, vehicles, or pedestrians, as we join the Director of Roads and Traffic Management, Engineer Olufunsho Eluladi, on the move. It's a pleasure to have you on the program today. We have with us Lamata's Director of Roads, Engineer Olufunsho Elulade, to discuss with us the roads that Lamata has worked on under the Babatunde Raji Fashilas administration in the last eight years. You're welcome to the program, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, Lamata has a declared road network. We want to know what is the declared road network and how important is this network to the commuting in Lagos? Yeah, well, declared road network, uh, it's a network of, uh, there are a network of roads okay. that are very strategic to the state and they are mainly uh, bus route and public transport route because from 2005, uh, Lagos state roads have been in a deplorable state. Okay. So, and the government, with the aid of uh, international donor agencies like the World Bank, have uh, committed a lot of fund into making sure these roads are being fixed so that we will have you know free and portal free uh, comfortable ride for the commuters okay so under the declared road network how many roads has lamata worked on in the last years the declared road network is 632 kilometers wow. so out of the 632 kilometers lamata has carefully chosen I mean, very, very strategic bus route, for example, like the BRT from the Korodu uh, road to CMS. We have uh, Wemco Road. We have um, Akiadeshola Road. I can go on and on, and a host of other roads. Having mentioned Akiadeshola Street, it is one of the major spine roads in Victoria Island. I want to know how important is Akiadeshola to commuting in Victoria Island? and even in Lagos, generally? Well, when you look at uh, Akiadeshola, you will see that Akiadeshola is a connector road. Yeah. It's a link road. It connects Amadu Belo uh, Road yeah. at the Barbage end all the way to Falomo Bridge. And this road has always had a flooding problem. So it was time for government to move in there and fix the road. And sincerely speaking, Akiadeshola Road, the road pavement itself was good. But the government went in there to actually, I mean, with the aid of the World Bank, went in there to actually fix the flooding problem. Okay. So that's why you are uh, you have seen us on Akiadeshola Road. And there is no way you can fix a flooding problem without you, you know, touching the road pavement itself. Exactly. So this is what we've gone to do on Akiadeshola Road. So with that flooding problem, there were lots of traffic and gridlock. Gridlock, traffic, you know, cars stopping in the middle of the road, you know, and water getting into engines and a whole lot of other problems. Wow. So let's give us a description. You have already mentioned the reason for the rehabilitation. But want to know if you can give us a pictorial description of what Akiadeshola will look like by the time the rehabilitation is completed. Well, Akiadeshola for me will look like something like this road that we are on. But the major difference is that the structural, the road pavement itself on Akadeshola Road is made up of block paving. Okay. You know, while this one is uh, made up of uh, hot road asphalt, bituminous uh, material. And it will have street lighting on the side like this one. It will have the veggies. It will have uh, some, 
signalized uh, junctions, and of course, it has more parking provided okay. than this one with pedestrian foot way as well. I think it's important we might have to visit Akiadeshola Street to have a look to also know the level of work that has been achieved so far. How important is the rehabilitation to the roads and commuting on Victoria Island? Well, the, the, uh, the importance is that when you look at the island, the island has a very, very high water table. And back in the days, you will see that when it rains, almost all the roads prior to the commencement of Namata in 2003 almost all the road when it rains almost all the roads on you know on the island most especially around victoria island is always waterlogged so the government decided that okay they will go in there you know and try to do some intervention that is why you have seen that we have been concentrating more on you know victoria island in particular okay. because victoria island is more or less the the economic hub uh, is one of the economic hubs of lagos state and, you know, if you don't have good roads, it's going to disturb, um, you know, the man hour, it's going to disturb people getting to work. It's going to, you know, the economic activity and, you know, the viability of... People spend more time people on the spend road. People spend more time on the road, you know, businesses will be obstructed, delivery will be in chaos. So this is why we went to um, Victoria Island. And when you look at all, all the roads that we have fixed on the island, especially Victoria Island, they are all block building because it, it, it's the best intervention or the best solution for any area or any terrain where you have its water table Same. as high as we have it, you know, around the Victoria Island uh, environment. And of course, you would have seen that we planned the roads that we, you know, carried out intervention on, you know, because you will find out that the Ologwem, the Samuel Manor that you mentioned, okay. if you look at Samuel Manor, and Bishop Babu Adeko, you will find out that both of them link to Zubamba the way. Exactly. So for us to complete that loop, we have to look into the two roads. So it's easy for commuters to maneuver, you know, and move around and get to wherever they want to get to, you know, in good time, good time. and, you know, with uh, less stress. And when you look at Scenario Dianijo as well, Scenario Dianijo has been riddled with potholes, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very it was very deplorable before we went there. And you will see what we have done there as well. You know, we were able to adjust the, the drainage system with Ligalia Yoride Road okay. and dump it into the canal, just downstream of, um, you know, along that road. And I can go on and now you look at Amodo Ojikutu. If you look at Amodo Ojikutu, you will see that it has a lot of banks, a lot of offices. You know, we went in there as well to fix the flooding problem. You know, I can, I can, I can go on. In, in fact, I can keep going on and on. <laughs> so, but what is the lifespan of all these roads? Yeah, of course. Any, any road, we expect that the government would have. If it's, if it's a block paving, we expect the government will have almost 50 years without it being, I mean, fixed. But you know the asphaltic, Asphalt. uh, asphaltic pavement like this, they, they, they were designed to, for 20 years, max you can have 25, and you know, you take the surface off and you resurface it again. You don't need to do full construction. All you need to do is to do, you take up the binder course and the wearing course, which is the black top, yeah. you know, because it would have exceeded its design uh, span and you relay it and you have another 10, 15 years. So, and if you look at the BRT lane as well, we are started changing it to concrete. Concrete, yes. Yeah, because we want to reduce the maintenance costs and at the same time, we want it to have a longer lifespan. As a rigid pavement, you are expecting minimum of 50 years without it being, you know, fixed or relayed. Okay, coming back to roads you have worked on on the mainland, let's talk about Wemco Road. Wemco Road is a model road because it has the street furniture, the pedestrian walkway, the bicycle lane, and we see a beautiful road. What do you have to say about Wemco Road as the project director? Yeah, well, Wemco Road, if you look at Wemco Road, you will know that it's a flagship road for Namata and the state. And the reason being that is the only road that has included in it cycling and you know measures will be taken and you know we'll do a lot of surveys to see how the road is keeping so that if the road is working very well Lagos State will start you know every road would have 
as much as we can, the government can try, we yeah. have introduced in it uh, cycling. Okay. And of course, you can see we have uh, introduced uh, some form of uh, speed breaker, the, you know, the speed table. And if you look at the finishing as well, and if you look at this piece of land on my right hand side, is uh, a mark for park, you know, for the residents. So it's, 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 it's a road that has a unique uh, features compared to some other roads in Lagos. Okay, because I can see the speed tables on this side of the road, but coming from this side, there are no speed tables. Any plans to install on this side? Yes, uh, the contractor is still working. working okay. You know, they have areas that have been earmarked or identified for speed table location, and it has to be strategic. You don't just come and put speed table anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can see the one that is there. Any in any junction, before you get to that junction, you need to break down the speed of the vehicle. That's why you have seen that introduced there. Yeah. If you have to see another one, you see another one down. just before down there. So this is the idea about the introduction of the speed table or any speed reducing. So when are you going to also install um, road signs to inform vehicles, pedestrians, on how to use the speed tables, okay, I'll at least to be aware that there is something like that on the road. Yes, as I speak, the, the signs are being made, and if you look at the road, you will see that there are still some signs missing, like the cycle, uh, like the cycle lane signs. All these signs are alien to us in, you know, in this part of the road, especially the cycle lane. So it, it takes time for, you know, the sign maker to get the actual, you know, world best signs or the ideal standardized sign used all over the world to inform approaching vehicles of either speed hump or speed table or you know um, cycling. Okay going forward is there any maintenance plan for the roads and the, the, the sidewalks? Yes of course there is maintenance plan anytime the government uh, rehabilitates a road you know, it goes through a maintenance cycle, okay. and as I speak, we had already commissioned contractors who will almost on everyday basis because that's check, very important. Uh, check check the drainage system because on this road, you know, we have underground drainage system yeah. as well. So the government and uh, Namata has commissioned them, so they will start working in earnest. And you know, another thing is that uh, the maintenance. It will be done in conjunction with the sister uh, agencies. agencies like Ministry of Environment, uh, Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, uh, Lagos State Public Works Corporation. Okay. So every, every, everything is already planned. So what thoughts would you leave with our viewers, especially under the administration of our new governor, Mr. Kim Wumi Ambodi? I will just uh, implore our viewers to still expect the gains of uh, Democracy, because under the past immediate governor, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN, uh, the infrastructure in this state has uh, experienced a lot of upgrade. And I have no doubt that our new governor, uh, Mr. Akio Miambode, will build on that. Okay. Because the plan is that in a few years to come, we want Lagos State to be one of the best cities anybody who wants to live in the world, being a mega city as it is right now. So we are really looking forward to a more beautiful Lagos, a, beautiful, a more beautiful mega city in years to come. Thank you again for being with us on the program. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been Engineer Olufunso Edulade, Director of Roads Lamata, speaking with us on the roads that Lamata has worked on in the past eight years under the administration of Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN. Thank you again for staying with us on the program. We'll be right back after the break. took us three episodes, and now you know why. Babatunde Raji Fashola's transport policy in Lagos State is one of the top reasons why Lagos is one of the world's 36 mega cities, and an entire season of Lamata Afa is not enough to review them all. In the meantime, do stay tuned for more.
ati ri bayi pe ipinle oko ti da o si ti yato are bi gomina wa no baba tunde raji fashola se fi takun takun se gbugbu se ti won se fun odun mejo gege bi gomina ipinle eko e lo mu ki oga ti won moju to eto ona ati sun kera fakera ko ni ile ise lamata nba wa so won se se oju ona wemko road titi akin adesola bishop abaya de cool ati gbugbu awon titi ni victoria island ati ni mainland ni ipinle eko won aso fun abai wi pe o ku si wa lowo lati ba ijoba ipinle eko sise ki a si pa awon ofin ona mo ni igba gbogbo fun alaafia won ona don si se lagos state don improve confine as former governor baba tunde raji fashola put my for ground do the work for the 8 years where him be governor for lagos state na yin di oga for la mata where they in charge of road and traffic matter Come follow us talk as then take work for Wemco Road, Akia Deshola, Bishop Aboya De Cold Street, plus other road then where they for VI and mainland. He can talk say, the one where remain, now your handy day. Make you follow government's work. Do as law take talk on top traffic matter, plus other things we suppose make the road day some. For every success achieved here at Lamata to make your Lagos transportation experience better, we adduce it to a relationship with you and the never ending communication between us. Here are some of the messages you sent in this week. This is coming from Olan Shile Mudashiru. You posted saying, Lamata, you are doing well. I want to draw your attention to a portion of the newly reconstructed Ikorodu Road. Precisely, immediately after the Way Bridge, there is a community known as Towing Close. It is the only community along that axis without access road. But the problem now is the fact that the way bridge access through which they go and come out of their community is very dangerous and often accident is common in that portion. The solution is to provide at least stone based access route for them at the back of the pedestrian bridge to avert the danger of accident in that place. Thank you, Olan Shile, for the feedback. Lamata will certainly look into the issue raised and will sure get back to you. Keep sending your questions, comments, and remark to any of the following. It's been wonderful having you today on this episode of Lamata Half Hour. Lamata's business is to move you from where you are to where you need to or want to be without hurdles, obstacles, or hindrances. All we need is your cooperation. And if you think we don't need your help, Consider the wise words of Lance Armstrong. Anyone who imagines they can work alone and with rivals, no companions. The fact is, no one ascends alone. I am Obafemi Craig. I am Kate Harmony. Lamata. Keeping Lagos moving. <laughs> Lagos is changing for the best. Be out till